Yo, what is going on fam? Keezy here from Black Market. In today's video, we're gonna talk about 10 different ways to make selections in Adobe Photoshop. Number one, the Select Subject Tool. So the Select Subject Tool is amazing. It basically automatically cuts out the background from pretty much any portrait shot. Uh, you just need to make sure that your layer is unlocked and then click select subject. We can click the mask icon and there we go. Pretty much a perfect selection with very little manual touch up needed. Number two, the color range tool. So for kind of complicated cuts like this one, where we'd want to remove the background from the palm tree, one way that we can do this is with the color range tool. So go select color range and we'll get this color sampler. We can just click the background color and we get pretty much an instant selection of our tree without the background. As you adjust the fuzziness, it increases or decreases um, essentially the sensitivity of the selection. You can also shift click to add to the selection and alt click to remove from the selection. Once you're satisfied with your selection, you can click OK and there you go. Number three. Selection from layer. So in the case that you already have a PNG image with a transparent background and you wanna make a selection of your layer, you can control or command click the thumbnail to get a selection of the layer bounds. Number four, channels. So channels are a super underrated way to make selections. Basically you can use channels, just click and find the channel that is most similar to the selection you'd like to make, where black is transparent and white is your object. Next, duplicate that channel onto its own layer. Click Control M on the keyboard to open up a curves adjustment, and then adjust the curve to adjust your selection. So remember, black areas are transparent and white is our selection. So something like this looks good. When you're happy with the curves adjustment, you can control or command click the thumbnail of the channel to actually generate the selection. Next, I will click this create mask icon, add the layer mask, and there we have it. Our snowflakes are completely selected and we can change the background color to whatever we want. Number five, the blend if tool. So the blend if tool is definitely a super underrated, maybe not very well known way to make selections in Photoshop, but it's arguably one of the best for making complex selections of plastic, glass, or other transparent items. So to do this, we're gonna double click on the right hand side of the layer. This will bring up the layer style dialog and we can drag from the left hand side to the middle and then alt click the handle to smooth out our selection. And we just wanna make sure that we have a nice transparent background here. Uh, with still a good bit of contrast. I'm happy with that. Next, we're going to duplicate this layer, right click, clear layer style. This is gonna reset it back to default. Then we will convert our blend if layer to a smart object, and then control or command click the thumbnail to generate a selection of it. We can then use that selection as a layer mask by clicking the layer mask icon, and then manually paint in areas of our um, image here that got cut off with that selection technique. Number six, selections from shapes. It's basically just what it sounds like. You draw out a shape in the shape of your object that you'd like to select. So I'm just gonna use the uh, circle shape here and just draw out around the wall. Then I'm gonna go Command T and holding Control, just drag the corners into place until I'm happy with my shape and you can tweak this to your heart's desire. I'm about happy with that. Next, we're gonna control click the thumbnail of our shape and then click the add mask icon to use our shape as a selection. Another thing that we can do to improve the selection further since it's a perfectly round selection and that might not be super realistic is right clicking on that mask thumbnail, doing select and mask and then messing with this radius value a little bit and Photoshop will sort of intelligently try to find where the bumps in our selection should go. So I'm gonna increase the feather a bit and then increase the contrast a bit and just kind of play with the smart radius value and maybe decrease the feather a bit and just kind of mess with it until I'm happy with that selection. I think that looks good and there we go. Number seven, 
the pen tool. So there are a ton of automatic selection techniques and tools and stuff in Photoshop that make the pen tool less needed than it once was. However, it is still arguably the best way to make accurate hard surface selections in Photoshop. So what we're gonna do is just press P on the keyboard to activate the pen tool, then click, drag, click our point, click again, hold Alt to uh, tweak our curve a bit there, click, drag, click, and then just sort of go around the object, clicking, and we can hold Control to adjust the point, Alt to drag a handle, and then we can also click on a point and hold Alt to smooth out the curve. Kind of just go around the object. If we Alt click on a point, it will allow us to make a uh, sharper curve on the next one without assuming what kind of uh, angle we want. So I'm just gonna make that selection there, click here again with control, move it, clicking control, moving these around, zooming in, and then just going around the object uh, bit by bit. So sometimes this will happen where we will click and then we'll get this weird kind of curve. In a case like this, you just hold Alt and drag the handle back to where it belongs. Click add another point, holding control, drag that. And, and it's really just like this. It's a manual process and it gives you really full control over the selection that you create. Once you've made your selection with the pen tool, you just right click and then you make selection. I'm gonna feather it zero pixels, click enter, and there we go. If we get an inverted selection, just control I on the keyboard to flip the mask. If you'd like us to cover the pen tool in more detail because it really is worthy of its own video, let us know in the comments. There's a lot of other videos about the pen tool, but we might make one anyway. I don't know. Number eight, the quick select tool. To use the quick select tool, you just drag around the background and then you can hold Alt to subtract from your selection and sort of refine it a bit further. Number nine, the magic wand tool. So the magic wand tool is a good tool for certain things, specifically high contrast objects in your images. So for example, on this image of uh, this yellow jacket, we'd be able to click and get a pretty decent selection. To get more of this in range, we could either increase our sample size to something like 101 average, or increase our tolerance. In this case, I'm gonna do both. Click and try that again, so a little better. We'll increase the tolerance again a bit more to 80. And that's a pretty good selection. We can click the mask icon and there we go. I would usually probably come in with a brush tool and uh, clean this mask up a bit manually uh, just because with the magic wand tool, you do get some kind of janky edges occasionally, but it's nothing that can't be fixed up. And number 10, the polygonal lasso tool. So the polygonal lasso tool is a great way to make quick selections of objects that don't require uh, too much detail. So for a door like this, we could just use the polygonal lasso tool, click around and uh, make the selection of our door. And when we're done with it, hold control and click again to get our selection. Modifying selection. So this is sort of a pro tip and I wanted to show you guys that you can do this. Um, we've got a selection made here and you can see that as we zoom in, our selection is a little bit outside of the rails here. And once we apply the selection, uh, we're gonna get some of that blue outline slash fringe around the edges of our selection, which isn't really what I want here. So what I'm gonna do is control click the thumbnail of our selection and then go select modify, contract, and then try a value of like five pixels. Five is too much here, so we're gonna go do that again. Select, modify, contract, two, and that looks pretty good. Next, I'm gonna delete my original mask, and then click the create mask icon again, 
and there we go. Our new selection has much less fringe. We can also smooth out our selection here so you can see that it's kind of jaggedy here, not very good looking. What we'll do is just right click, select and mask, and then uh, play with this feather value a bit. So let's make this like four pixels here. And put the shift edge at zero, and then uh, radius on the edge detection at zero as well. And uh, then mess with this contrast value. And you'll see what happens if I just turn off the preview. This is the after and before. So this is blocky and nasty looking, and this looks pretty good. I'm out.